It's a cool Sunday evening in early May, and 57-year-old John Zukowski is taking a stroll through New York City's Upper East Side, just hours before taking part in one of the most important things he's ever done. Well, I'm uh, here to, uh, you know, help somebody that needs my stem cells, and uh, doing it because everybody needs a second chance. If they can get it from me or from anyone, why not? For John Zukowski, the road to becoming a stem cell donor began more than a year earlier when he attended a donor drive for a family friend similar to this one. Like thousands of others who do so every year, he donated a sample of his blood or a swab of cells from inside the mouth in hopes of saving the life of someone dying of leukemia. Probably weren't expecting that phone call. Nah, not at all. What? You know, yeah. I'm testing. Somebody, somebody matches me. <laughs> it's now a little after 7 a.m., and in a few minutes, John will be connected to a machine that will separate the stem cells from his blood. It's a remarkable new method and one of two ways used to replace the diseased immune system of leukemia patients. But more on that later. Barbie is going to uh, take the tissue type and enter it in. Right now, more on how John Zukowski and other donors become lifesavers. Once a donor's sample is collected, DNA typing is performed to identify proteins on the surface of white blood cells. The results are entered into a registry. The Gift of Life Bone Marrow Foundation is one of 48 such registries around the world. Its database containing the tissue types of tens of thousands of potential bone marrow and blood stem cell donors. Jay Feinberg is managing director. The uh, information that's provided to the transplant centers um, contains um, donor ID numbers that does not maintain personal contact information of those donors. That is maintained solely in this office and is not released to anybody. Tissue type is inherited, like eye or hair color. A patient's best chance of finding a genetic match lies with those of similar ethnic ancestry. The Holocaust had a huge impact on Jewish populations and cut off many bloodlines of, of relatives who potentially could have been donors for many of the patients who are alive today. If a transplant center discovers the tissue type of a donor in Gift of Lives database matches one of its leukemia patients, a request is made for additional testing to confirm the match. A member of the registry staff has the extraordinary responsibility of contacting the potential donor with news they may have the opportunity to save someone's life. This is an actual call. Hi, is this Isaac? Hi Isaac, my name is Jay Feinberg. I'm calling from the Gift of Life Bone Marrow Foundation. Um, calling because uh, you were tested a couple of years ago at a donor drive. Well, you've been identified as a possible match for another patient. Are you wondering what the person on the other end of that line is thinking right about now? I was so excited, I couldn't believe it. It's kind of like, wow, like you kind of won something. It just so happens Becky Fabisoff was a match for Jay Feinberg who was diagnosed with leukemia in 1991. First of all, you never think you're ever really going to match because the chances are very slim. The fact is donors remain on the registry through their 61st birthday. Not all are called immediately after being tested at a drive. Many donors actually receive their phone calls years later or may never be called at all. When I got that phone call, I was surprised, elated. Um, Scared? A little scared because I didn't know what to expect, but when you're given that opportunity to help save a life, how could you say no? What can you expect? Are there stitches? Or no, there's, there's no cutting or stitching involved. Donor education is a priority at Gift of Life. Every issue involved in the donation process, including the procedure itself, is discussed in person at a donor information session, where a registry coordinator or physician answers questions. You don't actually lose anything in the long run by donating bone marrow uh, because it regenerates in, in four to six weeks. Among the most important and sobering issues to be discussed, the donor's commitment. Not a legal commitment, but a moral one. Because once a leukemia patient is prepared for transplant, there's no turning back. If they chose to back out later on in the process, once the patient has begun conditioning this chemotherapy and radiation to destroy their existing immune system, they, they would die if the transplant didn't take place. As we mentioned, there are two ways to collect the stem cells used to replace the patient's diseased immune system. Bone marrow harvested from the posterior pelvic bone 
and stem cells collected from the peripheral blood. The gold standard for the allogeneic transplant still is at this point the use of bone marrow itself. In this procedure, bone marrow donors are taken into an operating room and given either a general or regional anesthetic. In a procedure that lasts an average of 60 to 90 minutes, a needle is inserted into the posterior aspect of the donor's pelvic bone in an area called the iliac crest. The donor then goes home in a few hours or in some cases the next day. There was a soreness in my back and a little bit of my arm from the IV and but it got you know easier and easier so by the time it was a week I went back to work. You get a couple needles and you know in the little discomfort in the beginning and then there's nothing. Increasingly often transplant centers are requesting donations not of bone marrow but rather blood stem cells. The decision is made by the patient's physician. It's a method that has a number of advantages for both donors like John Zakowski and the leukemia patient. It seems as though stem cells are as useful, if not more so, than bone marrow itself for performing the transplant. The bone marrow certainly engrafts, that is, takes and produces the new blood cells more quickly. For the patient, the effectiveness of blood stem cell transplantation is still being studied, but results are encouraging. For the donor, there's a quicker recovery time because there's no procedure in an operating room. Instead, they're connected to a cell separating machine like this one. The blood is taken out of one vein from the arm. It's brought into the machine and separated into layers. And then what they're looking for is the, the white blood cell layer. And that's where the stem cells lie that we're trying to collect. But stem cells don't circulate in the peripheral blood in sufficient quantities for collection. In order to produce enough stem cells in the bloodstream, donors like John are given injections of a naturally occurring growth hormone for several days leading up to the donation. Oh good, it's the high test kind. <laughs> no question. Then the stem cells are packaged and hand carried to the transplant center where the recipient is waiting. And in a very ordinary looking procedure, it's transfused into the leukemia patient through a simple IV line. The remarkable aspect of all of this is that the bone marrow and the stem cells are programmed to swim their way back into the bone marrow areas, repopulate the area, and once again produce blood cells. Can help me make some lunch? 42-year-old Anita Spitzlade, a mother of two from New York, owes her life to a young man she's never met. I also thought, how can a complete stranger who knows nothing about me be willing to do this? And God bless him that, that he was able to do this. And um, it's still something that I'm amazed by. Stem cell transplants can be a life-saving option not only for leukemia patients, but also those suffering from a wide variety of cancers and immune diseases. Why the donors like the young man who saved Anita's life do this? Jess asked Ruth Geismar, who donated stem cells that saved the life of a man she's never met. I think in life, when you have that opportunity to help save another, then you realize what life is all about and you know everything else doesn't matter. It's amazing. It's it's the most unbelievable ex you know experience. Sometimes I just I'm just sitting and I'll be thinking about it and I'll be in awe and I, I feel so lucky that I had the opportunity. Becky and Jay met a year after his transplant. John Zukowski hopes to meet the person whose life he saved one day too. As his blood stem cells are packed up, a letter from John to the person whose life he's about to save is placed inside. The transplant will take place in a few hours. The bond between John and his recipient will last a lifetime. Dear friend, do you believe in miracles? This is going to work, and you are going to get well and live a long and happy life. Trust me on this. I feel very, very positive.